All right, guys. So I've already told you in the uh, in the last episode that in the next couple of weeks we are going to be focusing on the comment section below. We're actually going through all of our comments in the last couple of years to really filter out what kind of questions people are really trying to know. That said, so these next couple of weeks we are going to focus on that to make sure that we're answering your questions through a Geminar episode. And again, you've been following our channel for a long time. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button uh, because you know obviously people say that it helps out the algorithm, but more importantly, uh, it definitely shows that you support here at uh, support us here at Fire and Brilliance. Okay, so today's episode is going to be dedicated to a person by the name of Paula Marlene. Okay, so she has a very uh, very um, uh, basically uh, a detailed question. Let me go ahead and read that out to you, okay? So basically the question is, hi, I have a question about the Lab Diamond pricing. So I was looking for several rings online and the one that was named Lab Diamond, quote unquote, was cheaper than a Moise Knight. And now I'm confused. Is that a simulated Lab Diamond? Like it's made out of other material? Or why do they call that a Lab Diamond when it's probably not? And how do I know which would be a real Lab Diamond if they use the name for prices between $200 to $2,000 where do prices of an actual one carat Lab Diamond start let's say maybe one that doesn't have the greatest cut or best clarity or color all right so that is a loaded question I'm going to break that down for you so so uh, I'm going to sum it up uh, through the title of what's the difference between a simulated versus a synthetic diamond and before getting right into it for you make sure you hit uh, make sure again subscribe to the channel follows on TikTok, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram as well as Twitter and I'm gonna get right into it for you. All right so as again Paula Marlene uh, basically asked uh, a pretty loaded question. She's she's basically asking two things. Uh, why is uh, are some places online selling lab diamonds for less than Moise Knight when a lab diamond should be more expensive than a Moise Knight? Uh, is it a simulated diamond or is it not a simulated diamond? So she's technically asking uh, what is a terminology, the definition of a terminology, and how does that correlate to pricing? So I'm going to kind of break that down for you, okay? So uh, number one, what's the difference between a simulated diamond versus a synthetic diamond? So in this case, all that this basically means is that a simulated diamond is a gemstone uh, that is used to look like a diamond. It doesn't necessarily mean it is a diamond. So for example, there's been many gemstones in the past, uh, man-made or not, that has been worn to make it appear as if it's a diamond. Uh, so let's just say for example, if you're wearing something, you want it to make it appear as a diamond. Uh, some people have used um, cubic zirconias for that. Some people have used moissanite for that. Uh, some people have used other natural gemstones uh, for that, right? So uh, it, it, other than natural diamonds, obviously. So that is called a simulated diamond because it's made to look as if it's appeared to look like a natural diamond. Whereas a synthetic diamond is actually a diamond. Uh, a synthetic diamond is a lab grown diamond. The only difference is that it's not natural. Right, so uh, in other words, the chemical comp chemical composition is the same, the refractive index is the same, uh, the Mohs scale is the same. Uh, the only difference is that it's not a natural diamond. Okay, so let me give you the uh, the definition uh, on Google. A simulated diamonds are also known as diamond simulants and include things like cubic zirconia, moissanite. Um, what are synthetic diamonds are also known as laboratory grown diamonds laboratory created diamonds, culture diamonds or cultivated diamonds, and there are real diamonds but just not grown in mother nature. So that's exactly what I had just mentioned to you just right now, okay? So uh, I'll give you a few examples, right? So simulated diamonds, uh, if they're made to look just like a diamond but does not have the same chemical, comp chemical compositions as diamonds qualities or characteristics, uh, for example, a cubic zirconia measures in the Mohs scale, uh, which measures the dur durability of the hardness of a gemstone between an 8 to an 8.5 versus a 10 out of 10 for a natural diamond or even a lab diamond, right? So uh, a refractive, uh, a cubic zirconia has a refractive index of a 2.15, whereas a natural diamond has a refractive index of about uh, 2.42. 
Okay, so they again, they are not diamonds. They're there just to make it look and appear as if it is a diamond. Whereas a synthetic diamond is a diamond. It's a lab-grown diamond. The Mohs scale is the same as a natural diamond. It's a 10 out of 10. The refractive index is a 2.42, just the same as a natural diamond, regardless if it's a lab-grown diamond or not. So it's the same thing. It's just man-made, right? So that's the difference in terms of terminology. So understanding the right terminology when you're shopping with a jeweler is extremely important because if, if it's titled simulated, that's a huge difference than synthetic, right? So if it's titled simulated, it's just made to appear and look as if it's a diamond when in, in actuality, it's not a lab diamond. Now, so I'm going to break down the second part of this uh, episode is how does that correlate to price, right? So price, uh, there are many things that is correlated to price. I mean, you, it's not just whether or not it's simulated or synthetic. Uh, when it comes to prices, uh, the, you know, obviously the law of supply and demand. Uh, if there's more supply than demand, the prices will go down. If there's more demand than supply, the prices will go up, right? So supply, laws of supply and demand is extremely important. So uh, that's number one. Number two, the cost of production of the lab diamond is important. Uh, the cost of material of the lab diamond is important. Uh, that, uh, that basically will correlate to the end result of the price. Uh, but at the end of the day, obviously understanding the terminology between simulated and synthetic is extremely important too because chances are if you're purchasing a simulated diamond or cubic zirconia, the prices will be much less than a synthetic diamond or lab-grown diamond. All right, so those will play a big role in the prices. Obviously, there's other uh, things that goes in the prices too, as well as markups, depending on who you buy it from, uh, depending if you're buying it from a branded store versus a non-branded store, depending if you're buying it from uh, a jeweler that uh, likes to mark it up more versus a jeweler that doesn't like to mark it up. I mean, there's a whole bunch of uh, things that uh, comes into pricing. But at the end of the day, uh, those are the main factors, supply and demand, cost of production, cost of material, and at the same time, is it assimilated or is it synthetic? Okay, and my last part of this advice uh, for you, Paula, is this, right? So you, again, you've asked the difference between assimilated versus synthetic and how does that correlate to price. At the end of the day, make sure you do your research, make sure you work with the right jeweler, and make sure you work with a trusted jeweler. I've said this many, many times in the past in many different episodes, and it's so important that uh, you, uh, you know, pe uh, people do understand this, especially if you're going out there to purchase and spend so much money on jewelry, uh, because it's not a, an inexpensive item, right? You want to work with a trusted source. You want to work with a reputable jeweler, because most reputable jewelers will not sacrifice their entire uh, business that they've been working on for decades just for one transaction. Uh, you know, if you if, if someone's going to sacrifice their entire business for one transaction, they won't be around for very long. Uh, that's that's number one in terms of finding a reputable jeweler. Uh, number two is also find not only a reputable jeweler but a specialist. Um, just like there are special doctors, right, for the eyes, the ears, the nose, there are specialists when it comes to jewelry as well. I'll give you an example, right? I have a very good friend. Uh, sometimes we will go go and eat Vietnamese food because uh, you know for pho, and most people know what pho is now. Vietnamese food is you know that's a very popular dish for or bowl, a, uh, basically a beef soup, in the Vietnamese community. That said, one time he went to the, uh, a Vietnamese restaurant instead of ordering pho he ended up ordering a burger, right? And he left very disappointed. And I, we were all making fun of him saying, why would you order a burger at a Vietnamese pho restaurant? Because you know why? Guess what? They don't specialize in making burgers. So maybe that burger's been sitting around for a while, or maybe they just don't know how to cook a proper burger. Just like how you wouldn't want to go to a very good burger restaurant that also sells pho. You might not want to buy pho from a a burger joint, right? So when it comes to jewelers, the same thing. Um, you know, you, would, you may not want to go uh, to a jeweler that only specializes in watches and ask for lab-grown gemstones. And you may not want to go to a uh, jeweler that only specializes in um, rings when, when you're looking for custom jewelry from beginning to end. You want to go to a specialist. So in this case, 
If you are purchasing a lab-grown diamond, moissanite, or any other kind of lab-created gemstone, you may want to do your research and work with people that specialize in the lab-grown space so that you can know when you make the purchase then you are leaving at a 99% confidence rate that you are leaving with what you paid for. All right, guys, so I hope you guys really enjoyed what you actually heard there and what you were able to learn. Um, again, we are reading all of the comments, and again, I've mentioned to you this in the past, I might make a video just for you, okay? So if you have a topic or a question that you want us to go over, uh, make sure you leave in the comment section below, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will read it. If it's, if it's actually very popular, if that's what people are looking for, uh, then again, we may make a video just for you. Again, so follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and TikTok. And I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.